You said them. I didn't hear you. I was talking about you.
Uh, Lord, in our service to you, we thank God for uh, your goodness to us, to us, Lord, that we would worship you tonight. Uh, Lord, put it aside everything that uh, is distractful and, uh, Lord, not amusing. Uh, Lord, our, our time wise to be service to you, Father, we just pray that you folks are able to be here. I uh, just need to pray for the lead that you be with him, Lord, as he recovers. Uh, thank you for the brother uh, priest back with us tonight. Amen. Uh, Lord, we continue to pray for the sexton and others who are ill with you. Such bodies heal the brains of my father's prayer. Uh, also, for those who read this morning, the message for the working hearts, lives, and make changes um, that need to be changed. Father, we thank you again for your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you being here this evening. Man. It's good to have you. Uh, it's just by design. You just all decided that to uh, two sections and you know, stress me out, you know. And, uh, Y'all just move around on me, and I'm going, okay, so it's just like, no, there you are. No, there you are. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want to use a preacher, just sit in a different place. And uh, so if you don't get prayed for it, you don't fall. <laughs> All I can say. Or you get prayed, you know, God, uh, I pray God, you know, God, they weren't in church tonight, you just need to strike them. And, you know, <laughs> That's why I sit in this chair, because I want to make sure I get the blessings of the preacher on me. <laughs> Appreciate you being here tonight. Don't forget that on the 30, uh, not the 30, but it's 28. Uh, actually, I have one of these. 29. Yeah, I think it's somewhere along in there. Uh, I could have done my math, but we all know how good that is. And uh, so uh, uh, for the uh, church fellowship after service on uh, that Sunday evening, uh, it is after the evening service, Brother Roy. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Yes, thank you. We have service at 5 o'clock, and then after that, we're going to go to the cafeteria, fellowship hall, multi youth building, and we're going to have a time of fellowship. Okay. So, that means food. Yeah, that food last time, too, but you left it home and showed up. So, anyway, don't forget about that time change. Now we can Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure that yeah, was. We would have liked to taste it. Come on, and it. You know, I'm sure Miss Avita cooked some some really good stuff for it. Yeah, except for the Brussels sprouts, but she don't do that for it. Anyway, um, also um, time change on November fifth, and then um, Thanksgiving is on the twenty third. But our two, our Wednesday night service is on Tuesday night that week. And I put that in full, and so that will be forthcoming. But we have had a service at 5 o'clock on that Thursday evening. No, 7 o'clock, I'm sorry, Tuesday evening. Man, I hate it. Let me take a quick nap here so I can wake up. Uh, on Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, we will have our regular Thanksgiving service, and uh, uh, we'll just do everything in the cafeteria. We'll have food over there, we'll have service over there, and everything. And uh, so it uh, seems to work out better that way. And uh, so don't forget about that and uh, think about what it is that you're going to bring uh, and uh, maybe work together with each and every one. And uh, it's hard to believe we're almost in November. And, yes, sir. Uh, well, where did this year go? My mama says the older you get, the faster time flies. <laughs> If it warp speed now, I don't know if I can do the mock stuff. <laughs> it's just, you know, so uh, anyway, but uh, just be faithful. The message tonight will be kind of encouraging in, in that way, but uh, just uh, be faithful for the end of this year as we continue uh, to serve the Lord and see what God does. It's good to have a visit this morning and go to the uh, stay in the hotel. Uh, and uh, came to service this morning. And, uh, that was good. I think one of us has to Appreciate all the work that we've done. I have a monkey on our back. Turn to page number 110. Page number 110. Let's all stand with that. Oh 
Stephen just reminded you that uh, uh, as we receive the offering, that usually Sunday nights is part of missions and then Wednesday night building funds. I know Brother Kirk doesn't ever remember that, um, but that's usually unless you distinctly mark the envelope as, uh, as time, uh, that missions usually goes on Wednesday night, Friday night building fund used to go. And just uh, a note, um, the, the offering for the building fund has gone down drastically and we're not receiving enough to pay the note each month. So uh, about $800, a little over 500 but we keep front of 800 a month and we're not even getting 500 So uh, just uh, be praying about that, especially if you come to this meeting, we'd like to get this taken care of as quickly as possible. So uh, think about that, pray about that, and then just see what we're having to do with it. All right? Uh, as we're, as we're Bow for prayer, receive the offering. Just, uh, uh, Brother Roy, you do this in prayer, please. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for blessing us with such a wonderful church, Lord. I thank you that we are allowed to come and worship together, Lord, and Lord. I pray, Lord, that as we stand before you, that you open up our hearts and help us to be more willing to give back to you, which is correctly yours already, Lord. Help us to join together with the church and ministry to the fellowship of the tiny and of the Lord, we pray for the service Lord, to come down and join us. Fill the pastor and all of us with the fullness of the Holy Spirit, Lord. We can learn to be more like the Lord, we love you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sent unto me, saying, Come, 
Let us speak together in some one of the villages in the flame of Odo, but they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work be ceased, whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent me, uh, sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Let's pray, Father, as we bow before you. Uh, this evening, I, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, those of us that are here to realize, uh, Lord, the work that we do for you is great work. And there's a lot of hindrances that uh, would prevent and preclude us, Lord, from uh, continuing on doing what it is that we want to do or should do uh, for you. And Lord, as we look at these uh, four uh, excuses or four reasons that uh, the work is hindered, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to, uh, to realize, Lord, that... Uh, Nehemiah's day and our day is, is not really that different uh, in the attacks upon the house of God and upon the work of God and upon the city of God. And so, Lord, I pray that you help us to internalize that tonight. Uh, use me tonight. Fill me with that spirit. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we look at uh, chapter 6, as I've said, there are four areas where the work is, that, that those that are uh, opposing the work of Nehemiah, the rebuilding of the city of Jerusalem, and the uh, fortifying of the city of Jerusalem, uh, there there are those that were in opposition. Uh, if you recall back, and, and when uh, Nebuchadnezzar came back, came in and uh, led off into uh, two or three exiles, uh, took the people uh, to uh, Babylon, and then of course he lost control and. Uh, the means the Persians took over and, and on through there. Uh, we see that this is the situation uh, where now that God has promised or had promised the children of Israel under Isaiah and also under Jeremiah that they would return back from captivity after a period of 70 years and that during the time of Cyrus, and Cyrus was named uh, uh, specifically that this would take place. And, of course, it happened exactly the way that God said it would. And as we come here, we notice that uh, Sanballat, Tobiah, uh, these are the enemies of, of God's work. And we need to understand that there's always those that are opposing the work of God. There's always people that oppose the work of God. Uh, if you talk to people about, about, uh, about the work, or if you talk to people about the Lord, uh, there are those out there that have a derogatory or have a, uh, a, a bad taste in their mouth for the work of God. Uh, they've been offended somehow. They've been uh, maligned. They, you know, they, they have something that keeps them and prevents them uh, from uh, embracing the church and having a part of the church. Some of that has to do because the church has offended them in some way. Um, and in those ways, some is that somebody, a pastor has offended someone, or a deacon has offended someone, a church, another church member has offended someone. And usually what happens in that situation is somebody, the person that's offended usually is looking for a reason to be offended. Honestly. I mean, they're, you know, they don't want to do this anymore. They, you know, they, they have other things they want to do. They become cold. They become indifferent to the Word of God. And so they're looking. And I mean, there's, there's, Myriads of reasons why people leave the church, why people go to different places and all that. And one of those that, uh, is the fact that they're looking to be offended. They're waiting for somebody to offend them so that they won't have to, don't have to come back. And they could use that, well, something so sad, that, you know. Well, that may or may not be true. You don't know. Uh, another reason that they, they do that is because they, uh, you know, my mind <laughs> I think that was a slick motor to try to sneak in there. But another reason that the people uh, tend to leave the church or have a, a problem with the church is because of their own sin. They go to the church and the, and the preacher preaches and the word of God is spoken and immediately there's something that they're doing that comes out whether the preacher speaks of it specifically or not. There's their sin and that's made known to them, and so it, it's, it's the preacher's fault. You know, it's none of his business. Well, you know, folks, 
I don't sit up at night, believe me, I don't have time to sit up at night and to read your mail. I, I don't sit outside your houses. I, have, I do not have your phones tapped. I don't know, you know, what you do inside your home. Unless you come and tell me, I don't know. But I will guarantee you the Holy Spirit of God knows what goes on in your house. He knows what's going on in your heart, and he knows what you need to hear. And so when the preacher gets up to preach and it offends you, it's because the Holy Spirit of God is trying to convict you to say, look, this needs to be taken care of. But rather than receiving it as the Holy Spirit trying to convict us and trying to get us and clean us up, we say, well, that preacher, he's just talking about things that's none of his business. I didn't write it. I just recited it. And mark it down. You, you, you inscribe this indelibly on your brain. Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. If I, didn't, if I said no word at all, if all I did is open in Genesis chapter 1 and began reading and read through Revelation 22, 21, I will guarantee if I, all I did was just read the word of God, somebody would find offense in something. Why? Because the word of God is a living book. And it speaks to the heart. And that's the purpose and the plan of it. And so, you know, people that are offended, they're offended because the, uh, someone, they want to be offended. Secondly, because the, uh, their sin is brought out and, and, uh, and it's preached on. And, well, I don't want to go to one of those churches that, that can, that's so condemning. <laughs> Sorry about that. But the Bible teaches us that we preach the whole counsel of the Word of God. Okay? Others have issues with doctrines. You say, what do you mean by doctrines? The doctrines are the teachings of the Word of God. These are the, the major, these are the foundations. The virgin birth is a foundation. The blood of Christ is a foundation. The inerrancy of the Word of God is a foundation. And, and I can go on and list these foundations that are built upon. And, and the problem is, the Bible says, the psalmist says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And we, we live in a society where the foundations are being destroyed and, and, and they're crumbling underneath the, word, the, the house of God. It's because people do not want to hear the truth. They want to have their fancies tickled. They want to have their ears tickled. And that's exactly what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4. He said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, what does it say? They, they, they just want to hear the good things. They just want to hear things that's going to that make me feel good. There's a positive and there's a negative. And some of us will say, well, I don't want to go to those negative churches at all. And, folks, you've got to have a negative in order to have a positive. It, it, it doesn't work. You can't, you know, I can guarantee you, if you raise kids, I can, I can guarantee you, the kids are sitting here, They'd much rather have donuts and pie and cake and candy than liver. Right? <laughs> Some of you adults are the same way. Just big kids, that's all you are. I mean, they'd, they'd much rather have the things that are not good for them rather than having good salads and and, and vegetables. I mean, they would much rather have the not good stuff to have rather than having the good stuff. Why? Because that's human nature. And so we have to understand when we're coming together in the work of God, there's going to be those oppositions. And as we look at this, now St. Ballard and Tobiah, they are in the in the way you might say of Satan trying to hinder the work of God. They, they don't want the work of God to go back. They don't want the, uh, the children of Israel to get back in Jerusalem and get back to where they are. Why? Because 
the children of Israel are hated simply because they're God's chosen people. Do you agree with that? They're hated simply because, I mean, why would you oppose Israel being a nation? Right. Well, because you take exception with them. Well, they should have learned a lesson of many, through all the years that they've been fighting against Israel, that God fights their battles for them. They don't like that. And so the Israelis are the most hated people, popular, uh, race, uh, uh, ethnicity uh, on the planet Earth. People hate them. They don't want them to prosper. They don't want them to go forth. They don't want them to have uh, the blessings uh, or receive the blessings of God. Even Balaam, when he, when Moab, when uh, uh, Moab was trying to get uh, Balaam to curse the children of Israel, and Balaam says, "Look, I can't go any further than what God says. And God's not going to curse them. It's just going to be keep to yourself a curse." Don't, you know? And they kept calling Balaam, and he kept going, and you know, and finally, Balaam said, "Look, I can't curse them." Because I can't go beyond what the Bible, what, what the Word of God says. But here's here's a, a formula to get them and get God to destroy them. What you do is you uh, you just let them move in with you, just cohabitate with them. Let your sons marry their daughters, and their daughters uh, marry your sons, and and and, and all that. And I will, you know, God will take care of it because then we, they'll start worshiping idols, and they'll start. And that's exactly what happened. The problem is, is not that the, the preacher's not preaching the truth of the Word of God. It's just that we allow the world to infiltrate the church and allow the world to tell us how we're going to live and what we're going to do. And, and the, the world says, well, you know, look, uh, I'm going to go through the ritual of, of service. I'm going to go through the ritual of, uh, of going to church. I'm going to go through the rituals of all of that. But there's no commitment in the, in the churches today. It's not about commitment. It's not about what it is that I can do to make the church to prosper. It's about what is the church going to do for me? I believe it was Nathan Hill says, ask not what you can, what this country can do for you, but what you can do for this country. Don't ask what you, the church can do for you. The church is not here for you. The church is here for you. If you're a child of God, you're an ambassador. You are to labor and work and, and go forward to get the, the, the church to prosper. You're not, it's not for you to come in and, and have fellowship and you know, and, and, and make you feel good. I'm glad that we can fellowship. I, I was pleased this morning that when we had the visitors come in, there were people that were going in and, and, and meeting the visitors and, and taking their turn and introducing us. I mean, that's a great thing. That's an awesome thing. That's what we're supposed to do. But I did notice that there was a gentleman sitting by himself, and I saw some other guys that were sitting by themselves that were members that could have gone over and made it for welcome. Hey, I'm sitting here by yourself, but I mean, you're in a strange place. Why don't you let me sit with you today? We're supposed to do that? That's that, that, okay. I mean, basically, he was a visitor for me. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to sit back there with him and preach. I guess I could. But, I mean, look for opportunities to be of service to God. Now, here we go. In, in chapter 6, the first thing that we see is that Sanballat and Tobias are trying to hinder the going forth of the work of God. Notice that they sit in and say, hey, hey, we need to have a, a, a confab here. We need to have a, a, a G15 or G25 or whatever G we're on now. And we, we need to have a, 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 a powwow here. We need to sit down and we need to discuss it. What, what exactly are your goals? What exactly is it that you're planning to do by rebuilding these walls and getting Jerusalem back into a, a, an operational city? You know, 
who are you going to allow to be there? Who are you going to exclude? And I mean, they're sitting down. They want to sit down and they want to cover, you know, discuss all the logistics of the, of the Jews moving back into their homeland. And I like Nehemiah's response. Hey, I'm doing a great work over here. I don't have time for your foolishness. That's so why I didn't see that in, in there. Well, read between the lines. Notice what he said. He, he, he says here, he said, uh, uh, and I sent messages on them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave and they come down to you? What? Why should I stop doing what I'm doing for God and for the work of God to have a confab with you? What's going to change? Nothing. The United Nations gets together with all these nations and they sit around their little round table and they discuss what changes. Nothing. America just puts out more money. Nothing changes. And they and they and they, they do everything they can to put oppression and to oppress the people rather than to bring about the, the freedom that they're saying. Oh, what the world needs is freedom. What the world needs is peace. No, what they're doing is everything opposing to the peace of America and to the other nations. If we're going to serve God, we need to do what God wants us to do, not what the nations out there want us to do. We built this building out here. I mean, we had fire marshals. We have fire marshals now. We have to we have to meet these standards. We have to do this. We have to follow this plan. I mean. And it's a continual process. And if if I would have let them, they would have just kept having meetings. And, and, and the work, it, it hindered enough as it was, trying to get the building permits and trying to get things going and things moving. But folks, we don't have time to play the world's game. We don't have time to uh, to get involved with the uh, with the rhetoric that the, the the our society is trying to push on on the churches. We have a responsibility. There are some good things out there that uh, that are commendable. I'm against abortion. I believe abortion is murder. I believe the Bible teaches that, is, that it's murder. But I don't have time to sit out on the street corners holding signs saying abortion is murder. I know there's churches out there that have dedicated themselves to fighting abortion or fighting homosexuality or fighting this or fighting that. And their whole focus is, is that and not on reaching the loss for Christ. We don't have time for that kind of stuff. Is it wrong? Absolutely. If, if we got every abortion clinic in the state of Texas closed down by standing on the street corner saying, uh, we're against abortion, do you think that's going to end abortion? No. Because man's heart is wicked. Man's hearts and desires, they want to complete and fulfill what it is that they want to do. And so the church sitting out there fighting that battle against the sin of murder is not helping our society. What's going to help our society is when we get our, in our hearts and our minds that men are dying and going to hell. And if we can reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ and they would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life, I can guarantee you we wouldn't be fighting the battle of abortion because that heart is changed. We're doing a great work here. We don't have time to get involved with those types of things. I think as far as the church, you know, if we want to help people uh, that were affected by Harvey, that's an awesome thing. We, we, you know, we could do that because we could use that as an opportunity to share the gospel of Christ. Stay focused. And that's what, what uh, Nehemiah said here. We have to stay focused. We have a great work here. We don't have time to come down uh, for your silly meetings. Notice uh, it says that he, that he was sent four more times. Come on down. Money Hall, come on down. No. 
We don't have time for that. Notice, if you will, uh, the, the second one is the uh, it, our accusations. Look at verse number five. Then sent Sanballat uh, his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be uh, their king according to their, uh, these words. And thou hast appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king of Judah, and now shall it be reported uh, to the king according to these words, Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. What does Sam Ballas say? He said in an open letter, he said, look, Gashmu has told us that you set, you, you are, are set to set yourself up as king. And you, you've hired yourself prophet uh, to go out in the community and to build up and, and, to, and to, uh, to promote yourself up to be the king of Judah. Sound familiar? You say, well, how does that go involved? Because there's people out there that think, well, the preacher, he's got too much responsibility. Rather than trying to help build the work of God, he, he, it, it, it's all about him. It's all about him having a nice house. It's all about him having nice cars. It's all about him. And, and we're supporting that work. But it's, it's not about us. It's not about the... the uh, the, the true building of the house of God, what it is, it's about building him up. Now, I will say there are some preachers out there that have enough pride in them that all they're interested in is, is building a church for their own benefit. I think there's one downtown Houston. I think there's a few others around, around our community that the, the focus is to build self up. Nehemiah was not a prideful person. Nehemiah was not a person that was out there promoting himself. What was he promoting? He was promoting the work of God. We're doing a great work here. We don't have time for your foolishness and for your, uh, for your antics. What we want is to continue to work here. And so they said, well, this isn't going to work. We can't hinder him from, from doing his work. So let's accuse him of doing something that he's not doing and get him uh, involved in a court case in a situation where he's got to defend himself and that's going to take you from the work and that's going to hinder the work. Yeah? We don't have time for, for the politics. I mentioned this morning at, at work, there, you know, regardless of what job you have, there's always going to be politics. Somebody doesn't think they were treated right. If you're looking for a job, you might come up with one pretty soon if you want to work in the garden dance because I've got rumored that there's the whole front desk people are fixing to get quit, are fixing to quit and walk out. Why? They don't like their hours. Hello? <laughs> you signed up for those hours. When you came in and you, you applied for the job, they said we have a front desk job, You're, the time is from 6 in the morning until uh, whatever 8 hours is from there, from 6 to 2 or 7 to 3, and this is your job and this is what you're going to do. Well, I don't want to do that. Really? Well, this was thinking about quitting. This was thinking about quitting. I'm going... Jim focus. Because all Jim's interested in is getting his work done and doing it right. Let, I mean, I can't work the 7 to 3 shift, the 3 to 11 shift, and the 11 to 7 shift. I just can't. Nobody can work all those shifts every day. You know, it, it, it's just not conducive. But everybody's got their, well, the manager said this, and, you know. And quit being a lily. 
The boss is the boss. If the boss wants something done some way, do the way the boss. Well, I think it would be better to do it this way. Well, that's not the way the boss wants it done. Do it the way the boss said. You think, well, that's just, that's just too much work. If that's the way he wants it, if she wants it, do it that way. And when the boss has confidence in you to see that you that your way might be a little bit easier or, or produce a little bit better, that's different. You have to do what's right. And I can guarantee you, as far as the church is concerned, there's not too many people that won't stand back here. Oh, they won't stand back here and they, if all they had to do is just preach and teach the Word of God. But there's a whole lot more involved in pastoring and church than just preaching the Word of God. Hello? The pastor's like the CEO of a company. He's the one that gets the, uh, gets the flag. <laughs> it's funny to me. Nobody will go to the manager. The, the, the main manager will tell them what they think. Isn't it amazing? Well, I, I, I don't want to work six to, to, uh, six to eight. Or six to three or six to two or whatever. I, I, I don't want to work. The, I want to work a later shift. Well, go tell the boss. Go tell the people that can't do anything about it. Well, I think we should get an hour for lunch. Go tell the boss. I can't fix it. I can't lengthen your lunch time or shorten it. All I can do is just do my job. And it's funny that in the church you go and tell everybody in the world, well, I just don't like the way that's done. Hello. Here I am. Talk to me. It has been documented. I mean, it's perfectly documented that I have not eaten anybody. I have not killed anybody. I mean, I've not hung anybody out on the, on the flagpole. I'm not an unkind person. I'm not a mean-spirited person. But I'm the last to know that if you think it's too hot in here. Or you think it's too cold in here. Back when we were down the street, it was so funny. You know, because we only had 10,000 feet to use of, of air conditioning. The whole building. Two, five, ten years. That's all we have. No air, no, no insulation in the walls, the ceiling, nothing. And it would be like the hottest blazes. And somebody go, man, it's so cold in here. Can you turn that up? And, and I'd walk up to the thermostat and I'd go like this. She was saying, how's that? Brother Roy said, oh, that's awesome. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. I didn't do nothing. I just went to the thermostat. <laughs> Looked at it. Put my hand up there and acted like I was doing something. And now he's satisfied. Why? Because he had a, a, a bone to pick. He was cold. And he thought I fixed it for him. So he was, man, he was right on. And his temperature never changed. That's how people are. Because we're selfish and we're prideful. And it's all about me. It's not about what, what for anybody else. At work we have a vent. We have to sit right there and do our work at the this, this station. And there's a vent that look, wait, do you realize that at two o'clock in the morning and there's no sun outside? And the air conditioner's sitting on 69 and blowing that it's cold. And I had one young lady ask me this, this week, is it you that keeps turning that thing up to 75? <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, it absolutely is. <laughs> she said, it's, cold, it's hot in here. I said, well, turn it back down when you get here. <laughs> if I can turn it up, they can turn it down, can they not? Right. 
Well, the sun's shining through the windows and it gets hot in here. There's no monopoly on the thermostat. <laughs> Fix it. Don't gripe about it. You see, that's our, our mentality. We want to gripe about something rather than fixing it. We want to do what we want to do. And that's what these guys were doing. They said, hey, okay, you're not going to come visit, but, but look, this, this is what the accusations that we have against you. And we want to hear what you have to say about it. What did, what did Nehemiah have to say about it? Well, let's, let's look and see what he said. Then I said unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest. But thou feignest them out of thine own heart. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. In other words, what Nehemiah said was, Look, guys. I don't have time to play your, your, your politics. I don't have time to play your games. You can see. I mean, you can take an evaluation. You can look at and watch and see what's going on. And you can pretty well know this ain't happening. This is not what's going on. Somebody is, is telling a, a, a bunch of lies to try to get followers. And so, secondly, was they made accusation. Let's look at the third one. If you look at verse number 10, it says, Afterward, I came unto the house of uh, Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of uh, uh, Mahat of Abiel, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the uh, temple, and let us uh, shut the door, doors of the temple, uh, for they will come in uh, to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. In other words, Nehemiah, Sanballat, Tobiah, Gashmu, and all these guys, they're against you. Even those that you think are with you are against you. And what you need to do is you need to come into the house of God and we need to shut the doors. You need to be protected. Nehemiah said, no. I'm just going to keep on working. Dr. Jack Hiles preached behind the bulletproof bed, uh, plexiglass. You say, why is that? Because he was hated. Because he preached the truth of the Word of God. He's not the only big preacher in the United States that has a plexiglass bulletproof shield in front of him, as well as people in the, in the, in the uh, auditorium that have firearms that are willing to protect. And what they say is, hey, let's, um, what preacher, you don't need to be out there on the streets. You don't need to be out there knocking the doors. You don't need to be out there uh, hobnobbing with, uh, with the riffraff of our society because they're seeking to destroy you. Yeah, but I have to look. I'm going to keep doing what I'm going to do. Dr. John R. Rice was walking down the street one day and mugger came up to him and put a gun at him and said, give me your money or your life. He said, <laughs> yeah, you can't scare me with that. If you watched the movie, um, War Room, there's a scene in there where they're in a parking garage and, and, and this guy comes and he's going, you know, <laughs> and everybody's afraid and, and the prayer warrior, she said, really? Everybody else is afraid. No, it's not about, we cannot allow the world to cause us fear, angst, and anxiety when it comes to the work of God. Because the devil will give you the fear that you don't need to have. God is not the author of fear. He gives us peace. There's perfect love. 
casteth out fear. We don't need to fear what man can do unto us. They can kill the body, but they definitely can't kill the soul. Missionary was by, was in the in a cannibalistic uh, uh, area, and uh, and he was working with the cannibals and and, and trying to win them to Christ. And, um, and one night they had all got together and they were going to storm his compound and they were going to kill him and eat him and and he slept like a baby. Years later, they somebody said something about it and they, they, they think, well, well, you know, why didn't you? Well, you have this this army of uh, uh, of men with flaming swords uh, uh, surrounding your compound. We couldn't get in, and, and we were fearful. God fights our battles for us. We don't have to fight. We don't have to uh, get involved in, in in those things. Let's just keep doing the work. You know, you knock on a door, somebody slams the door in your face. That's fine. I've I've been threatened with bodily injury. I had a guy threatened to shoot me. I've been yelled at. I've been cussed at. I've been, you know, I mean, if it could happen, it happened. You say, well, what did you do? That's why well, I never went out and knocked on another door. I, you don't know who's behind there. You don't know who's going to pull out a gun and blow you away. No, you just keep going. You just keep working. You just keep laboring. And God will protect. And... If he doesn't and you get blown away, hey, more power to you. <laughs> you made it before I did. You say, Brother Jim, you're, you're making this flippant. No, I'm telling you, we can trust God to finish the work that he started. He is all powerful. Yes, sir. It is not, we're not doing it in our own strength and our own power. We're doing it in his strength and in his power. Let's continue to do the work. The last one. It's found in verse number 15. So the wall was finished in the 20 and uh, fifth day of the month of uh, Elul in the 50 and uh, in, in 50 and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes. For they perceived that the work of, was brought of our God. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of, of Judah. Now notice this. The nobles of Judah. These are the men who, who are Israelites. These are the men who are the, are the pillars of the community who are involved with the tabernacle, with the, with the work of God. Now notice the progression here. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and letters uh, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was the son of uh, Shechaniah, uh, the son of Aram, and his son was uh, Johanan. And his son Johanan had taken the daughter of, uh, of Misho, Misholam, uh, the son of uh, Berechiah, and they reported his good deeds before me and uttered my word to him, and Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. Now it came to pass when the wall was built, and I had set up the doors, and the, uh, the porters, and the singers, and the uh, Levites were appointed, that I gave my brother and Hanani, and uh, Hanani, uh, the ruler of the palace, charge. Of over Jerusalem, for he was a, a faithful man and feared God above many. Now, notice that the nobles, that would be the leaders within the house of God, the, uh, the city of God, the, the, and they were in cahoots with the enemy. You see that? There were those in the city, and those were heathens, that were connected to uh, to Tobiah, but then we also had those that were nobles in the city, and they were connected to Tobiah, and they were feeding him information, and Tobiah was feeding it back to uh, to Nehemiah. I said, well, 
This is what's coming out. Do you realize that there are people out there that are that are they're playing against both sides? There's people out there that make it make you look good or make, make the uh, the preacher look good or make the church look good, but on the back side they're trying to destroy you. <coughs> trying to put us in fear, trying to destroy the work of God. Folks, we don't have time to play these, these, these games. The work of God is not going forth because we have been allowing the enemy, Satan, to destroy the work of God from the inside out and from the outside in. We need to be faithful. We need to continue going. We need to continue uh, working for God. We don't have time for, for all of this, this disruption and all of this, this destruction of the, of the work of God, the house of God. I don't think God moved us out here and gave us these great facilities to close them down. The great, I mean, the city would love it. The enemies of the church would love it. Those who have attacked the church would love us to be closed down. But that's not what God And how do we get by that? We just keep doing it. We're doing a great work out here. You say, well, it don't look like it. No, because we're allowing the devil, we're allowing the, the critics, we're allowing the enemies of, of the word to get the victory. And the victory does not come through them. The victory comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. They're trying to destroy, but God is trying to build up. And if we side with the, with the enemy and with the wicked and with those that are against God, then this work is not going to continue. It's going to close down. And there's no excuse for that. Except that we are not being diligent to do what it is that we're supposed to do. I'm only one person. I can only do so much. Brother Mark's only one person. He can only do so much. Brother Steve's only one person. He can only do so much. You are an individual. You can only do so much, but combined together, we can do a lot. Amen. We can. And we need to be active. Why should the work of God cease while we fight these little, little battles here and there? Believe it or not, there are people that just start stuff to start stuff. That's right. There are. You don't believe it? Go out here to go, go to your job. Think about your job. Think about your, regardless of how great your boss is or how great your company is or how, what, there's, there's a dissenter in there. And their dissent is this. Well, I didn't get my way. Well, put your big boy pants on, tighten your belt up, and get busy, and get the chip off your shoulder, and do the work. When you have somebody like that, it's because there's pride in the heart. And pride is the strength. And amazing to me is that if somebody is disgruntled and somebody's upset, rather than them just getting up and going somewhere, they got to take the mic with them. And believe it or not, they're not always truthful. They don't, they don't always tell the truth. But they want everybody else to think, well, the, it's all the preacher's fault. It's all Brother Mark's fault. It's all, you know... <laughs> No, it's because somebody has got a got an in. They 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 they've already been offended. They've already, you know, they've already started sowing the discord uh, among the brethren, and they're already trying trying to cause problem and dissension because they want the premise and they want, want to make themselves look good. I have a coworker.
always has something bad to say about his boss. I like my bosses. They treat me well. But every morning, the, the general man, she calls. And when this young lady is on, you know, working, she goes, oh, I hope that's not Gay Lynn, because I, I just hate to talk to her because she's always so negative. She's never been negative to me. The other day, she, I, you know, you have to do these reports. You have to send, and, and you send reports to all the investors and all. You know, they want you to be nice. And, so, I mean, I put something nice in there about the beautiful weather or the great day we're having at the uh, Hill Bay Inn, or that, I'm sorry, not Hill Bay Inn. I'll tell my boss I said that. The Hill of the Garden Inn in Baytown or something like that. And, and my boss calls me and she said, I, I mean, you can see caller ID. I know it's her, but I always answer the phone. As soon as I pick it up, I see it's her, but I always answer the phone with the right reading. Good morning. Thank you for calling the Hill of the Garden Inn in Baytown. This is Jim. How may I direct your call? Jim, this is this Kaylin. I wanted to know when I pick up the phone, I'm going to answer the appropriate way. Because that's the way I was instructed to answer the phone. She says, You just make me laugh. She says, I love it. She says, I love it when you do the night audit because when you write that email and you send it out, I mean, there's something in it that's, that's comical. Well, thank you. The other one's over, man, I hate it. Because all she ever finds is the negative. All she finds is, 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 is I've done so, I typed something wrong. I, I, I misspelled a word and I have to reset it because I missed it. They have never made us reset an email because we misspelled the word. Really? But last night we were working on it. And she did it. She wanted me to do the letter, so, you know, in the email. And I'm going here, and she says, I have all these, these files uploaded, and all you have to do is just put them into the, and, you know, attach them. She said, there's 40-something files. I So I didn't pay attention. Well, I started to ask, I said, after I said one of them, I said, well, where's this file? Where's this file? Where's this file? Where's this file? Oh, they're, they're on there. I'm going, no, they're fine. Well, sure they are. Going, no, they're not. So I had to go back and redo it and resend it. He goes, I gave him a list. I mean, I typed out a detailed list. This is what you need. It's all in black and white for her. And she can't read it enough. And then she gets mad and the boss goes, you didn't do this wrong. It's not the boss's fault. Folks, I make mistakes. I don't like making mistakes. And sometimes I have Moses on the arm. And sometimes I have a live gel on the Mount of Transfiguration or whatever. You know, I make mistakes. But it's not the end of the world. If you don't make mistakes and you're perfect, this is the wrong place for me, buddy. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a, I don't mean to be offensive in any form of fashion. But we're not perfect here. And we're not going to be. But we should strive for that perfection. We should strive to, to be the best that we can be. We should strive uh, to uh, to promote the purity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's our job. And Nehemiah says, look guys, I don't have time for your foolishness. I don't have time to play your games. I don't have time to come down and meet with you. I don't have time for, uh, for your politics. I don't have time for any of this. I've got a work to do. It's a great work and it needs to be completed. And we're going to complete it. Whether you like it or not. You notice how many times it says they try to put fear in us. In one chapter it says that they they were working and had some with the swords while the others worked. Somebody's going to have to fight the battle while others are doing the work. But we still have to be active. We have to be active duty Christians. 
Let's see what we can do. 2018 is coming. Yes, it's coming. It's coming around the bend. Let's. What can we do? You know, I, I found this out today. If you take how old you are and add it to the year you were born, it'll come up to 2017. Did you know that? It works. And somebody made the statement, well, it only happens once every thousand years. No, it happens next year too. You know why? Because the year you were born and the age you are is going to add up to most. <laughs> If you follow the plan of God, it's going to add up every time. Not every thousand years, but every year, every time, every work. It's going to add up, and it's going to come to the same, uh, same complete finish that God wants it to come to. And some will be here to watch it finish, and some won't be. Because some will throw in the towel and say it's not working. Some will bribe and complain and lead some off with them. But that just means we work hard. We labor hard. We just keep it. Maybe we should have to pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the blessing. We pray, Father, that you help us to be like Nehemiah and the children of Israel as they were rebuilding the wall there in Jerusalem. As we're faithful on rebuilding the Solomon's temple and Nehemiah faithful in building the wall and resurrecting the city and protecting for the protection of the city. Lord, there were hindrances. There were those that were trying to cause fear and anxiety, anxiety and, uh, Lord, uh, dissension and discord and all of those things. But, Lord, he and I said, no, we're just going to stay focused on what's important. Lord, I just pray that as the North Coast Baptist Church, we learn a lesson. Yes, we have our dissension. Yes, we have those that are uh, wanting to have meetings and, and discuss and all of that. But Lord, we need to focus on the main thing. And the main thing is reaching the lost with the gospel of Christ. And if Satan can hinder us in any way, he's going to do it. He's going to cause fear, he's going to cause anxiety. He's going to cause dissension. He's going to cause destruction. He's going to do anything we can. Lord, let us have a picture of Jesus Christ. To see the work you're taking. To see the work you love. So that we can see or your hand. Folks will be blessed. Souls will be saved. Lives will be changed. Lord, I pray tonight that one here that doesn't know Jesus, that they would come to know tonight. Lord, tonight I pray that uh, if there's someone that has difficulty, a problem with the, with the, with the church, the house of God, Lord, that, that they may uh, uh, get with you. Pray about it and then seek for your direction in your life. And help us, Lord, to unite together. As Paul teaches in the book of Ephesians, to have the unity of the Spirit, the unity of the church, the unity, the uh, Lord of the Lord. Lord, I just pray. Help us, encourage us, strengthen us at this time. Of course, the church of the precious name of Jesus, we pray with our heads bowed and our eyes closed.